Um, so tonight we're going to talk about how to keep those carbs in check over the Christmas period. I know it's actually just under two weeks till Christmas. And so we're going to talk about uh, strategies for managing your eating over this uh, festive and feasting season. Uh, any questions you want to ask? Thank you, Dave. Um, any questions you want to ask, just go for it. Um, a lot of you here are my members. We've talked about it and we're moving to uh, a slightly different, more interactive platform on Thursdays at 7. And it's in our private Facebook group. Any of you that aren't sure you know the deal, just email me. But I will post you all the links as well. And it will be cool because we can talk to each other a little bit more easily. Um, and you'll get to know what everyone else looks like as well. Right, so swiftly moving on. Carbs. Yes, carbs are addictive. And the problem is when you're low-carbing, that, um, hey, Chris, nice to see you. Um, the problem is when you're low carbing um, and you've been doing it for a little while that you've got the carbs out of your system. Uh, but when you open the door again, they come back full force. So it's not dissimilar to people I know that have given up smoking. Uh, they may have given up for years and then they decide to have a couple and before they know it, they're back to full smoking, even though they stopped smoking five years ago. It's that kind of scenario. So you've got two ways in which you can approach it. You can approach it in a low carb way. And actually Christmas is pretty damn easy to do low carb. Most of the meal is low carb. Uh, I don't know if you're anything like uh, my family, but what my family tend to do, I can't remember a recent Christmas where we actually got around to eating the pudding because we we're so full of all the turkey and the sides and everything else. We just didn't get around to pudding. Um, Dave is saying I've opened that door many times. It does get easier to close the door. Uh, and the thing I'm trying to say to you is that you don't want to open the door to carbs accidentally. If you choose to jump into the carb swamp and swim around in it for a bit over Christmas, then that's cool. Choose that up front. Don't feel guilty about it. Um, and, but what we need to do is put some strategies in place to get you back out again because that's the problem. We need to get you standing back on solid ground. Now, I can't tell you when I was brand new doing this years ago, and I'd have people say to me, right, okay, so I'm doing really, really well, but I'm just going to have Christmas off. I can't tell you how long Christmas turned into six months, because it would be, okay, so I'm just going to eat this on Christmas Day. And then the little voice in your head, for those of you that know, we call it your inner chimp, um, says, well, it's Boxing Day, you've got a lot left over, why don't we just have, finish it off on Boxing Day and then we'll get back on track. Yeah, but it's not long to New Year's and I'm going to be eating at New Year's again. So hey, tell you what, let's just not worry about it until we get to New Year's. And then what happens is um, it can be challenging to bring it back under control when you've been overdoing it for an extended period of time. So... It doesn't matter what you do, but you need to own it and plan it up front. So what I don't want you to do is um, be at Christmas dinner and be feeling deprived because all everything is looking at you and you're thinking, poor me. I also don't want you to be in the situation where you've decided to go low carb because you think that's the right thing to do and then get sideswiped by the carbs and then feel like you've failed. So if you've got no intention of avoiding roast potatoes and Christmas pudding on Christmas day, don't avoid them. Eat them, put them into your plan. Eat them knowing that you've decided to. Eat them knowing you're gonna enjoy every morsel of it and that you have a plan to get you back on track afterwards. Now, if you've decided you're not gonna let sugar even get a glimpse in for Christmas, and a lot of people do this actually because they really love using Christmas as um, a line in the sand. Like, this is me. Last Christmas, I ate this. This Christmas, I'm giving a different gift to myself and I've come a long way. Um, and I had some of my clients that did that last year and they said the funniest thing was that they didn't realize how much of a food hangover you get from carbs. And they said that they weren't the family's favorite person on Boxing Day. 
because they got up feeling fine and full of energy and wanting to go out and walk. They said they hadn't realized the effect that the calves had on them. They said they ate their body weight in turkey, but they avoided the calves. And everyone else in the family was caps locked and didn't want to move anywhere because they still had the food hangover. So you can decide. The important thing is that whatever choice you make, it doesn't come with guilt because all guilt does is drives further eating. So if you're going to eat stuff, bloom and well, enjoy it, own it, eat it, relax, and then make sure you have a plan afterwards to get back in place. So put some boundaries in place. Uh, you know, talk to other people about how you might want them to help you. If you do want them to help you, have a strategy to get back on track. That is the key. It is not the overeating that is the problem. It is how you respond to it. So I think in the UK, the average weight gain over Christmas for man, woman and child is three pounds. So that means little people that you think that don't have a weight problem, um, they overeat on Christmas too. Everyone overeats on Christmas. That is not a big deal. It's about what you make it mean. Um, so Kevin's saying, that's me. Kevin says he feels guilty. So that's no fun. There's no fun if you're feeling guilty or the alternative, feeling deprived. Own what you're going to eat and do it up front. So what I would recommend is you decide ahead of time when you've got a clear head because as soon as carbs get in the picture, clear head and clear thinking goes out the window, especially if you've had a couple of drinks. Carbs love to sneak in the back door when you've had a couple of drinks. So decide ahead of time what is and what isn't going to happen. The other thing is that if you stray from the path, decide ahead of time that you are not going to dwell on that and feel guilty. Decide you're going to put your energy and how you can get back on track. So people that you regard as being naturally thin and not having to think about it, they totally do. And when they do something that they hadn't intended, all they focus on is getting back on track. How can I get back on track? Not, I'm a bad person because I ate this. Look, if you ask a child who a bad person is, it's not someone that's nicked a profiterole from the dessert table. It's um, That is not going to get you locked up in jail. right? So you might do behavior you don't like, but it doesn't make you a bad person. So be aware of that kind of language. It doesn't help you. So guilt is your enemy. Guilt will drive further eating because you feel guilty. You think you failed. Well, if I failed, let's do it big style. Let's really dive in. Um, and that is not helpful to you. So enjoy. Whatever it is, enjoy. If you've got some favorite stuff you're going to have, then have it. Uh, you know, in my case, uh, sugar. I just, once I let the sugar in the door, it takes me a while to get rid of it. So I don't have type 2 diabetes. I do have um, insulin resistance in my family. So in my family, it's not diabetes, it's heart disease and it's big time heart disease. Um, so I'm, you know, so that's the reason why I am not a fan of carbs. And also... Um, they are really addictive and I don't enjoy all the rubbish that comes with carbs either. So sugar um, is off my menu this year, but that doesn't mean that nice stuff is off my menu. Any of you guys that know me will know that there is really nice stuff on my menu. So there is Irish cream on my menu. There is trifle on my menu. Um, I will post pictures to you guys, my members, of my Black Forest cake that is sugar-free, but definitely decadent. So the whole plan with my recipes is that you really can't tell the difference, um, but it doesn't give you all the downsides. So I am not having a deprived Christmas. I am planning on diving right in, um, but it will be on the stuff that I know can't claw me back in again. So that is always an option as well. Yeah, you know, I love cooking, so that's not a big deal for me. If you don't like cooking, then it might be a bit, you know, you might have to rethink it and come up with some other stuff. But if you're a savory person, then Christmas is your heaven. It's pigs and blankets and Stilton cheese and salmon and prawns and loads of meat. 
Um, so you don't actually have to miss out. You just need to decide if you have any deal breakers and how you're going to deal with them. So let's see. Um, so seven says, lost a lot of weight, still goes 10 stone, six pounds. I'm not sure exactly what you're telling me there, Kevin, but I'm sure you will tell me. Um, Lorna is saying the um, carb hangover is horrible. Dave is saying I'm having one small roast potato. I do it now when we go out for a meal. That's fantastic. And that's a great strategy. So I have um, some diabetics that have, we're going to say reverse their diabetes and are completely non-diabetic and they have a bread rule that they and for you guys that have still got high blood sugars this is not for you but they have a bread rule that they don't eat bread in their own house they'll eat it at a restaurant um and they, but they don't eat the whole basket so the one potato rule is a really good one um Giles said, uh, Giles here, but can't type and listen. Ah, you're flying in on Wednesday. Woohoo, Giles is going to have, uh, he's flying across the pond, he's going to have a UK Christmas. Um, Giles has lots of good stuff here, um, not like there isn't in the States, but you'll find lots of yummy stuff you can have a low-carb Christmas on. Dave says, find a carb hangover worse than a booze hangover yeah it's really bad if you drink a bit too much booze you feel unwell but you're not really looking for the hair of the dog um you're not looking to actually i feel really unwell i'm craving another drink of alcohol but with carbs you'll wake up in the morning you'll feel unwell and your brain goes oh we need more we need more of those carbs you're feeling unwell but don't worry we'll have more carbs no problem yeah, it's really um, tricky. And also, <laughs> people would look at you a bit strangely if you had whiskey on the rocks for breakfast, but nobody will look at you weirdly if you open up the cereal and have that with toast. Um, so it's much more accessible as well. Um, Chris says, is there any micro damage when one falls off the wagon once in a while? It depends how far um, long you've fall if that makes sense and I'm going to be really mean here and you guys will know I'm really mean um, you don't fall off the wagon you jump um, so it's really important that you realize that you're in control of your decisions because what we often say with food is I'm out of control and what that really means is we don't want to own the behavior so I'm not trying to be mean I'm just playing around with your head um, and it's really interesting in that being out of control of food and saying I'm out of control that's the only socially acceptable place you can say I'm out of control if you had a problem with alcohol and you went to your friend oh I got a bit out of control on the weekend they're not going to say don't worry you deserved it driving your car I got a bit out of control went on the cab <laughs> um, so it's interesting how we have this culture around food and people say oh don't worry you're fine the way you are um, so just kind of be aware of the little mind games that carbs set off um, and be aware of that language. So unless you tripped and fell on the cake, you made a decision to eat it, which is absolutely fine. There is nothing wrong with making that decision. Just be upfront about it and enjoy it. Because if you do it sideways, you feel guilty and you feel like you shouldn't be eating it. And then you feel like you've ruined something. And that is not going to help you at all. Um, oh, so Kevin says, I went on the 600. So Kevin, you did the Newcastle diet that had great results for you. And I know you lost a huge amount of weight. Kevin says, my blood sugar still goes up and down from 10 in the morning and six around 2 p.m. Yeah, so that can depend on the kind of food you're eating, how often Chris might creep in, um, that kind of thing. But the other thing is that uh, it's not about one blood sugar reading. It's also about the average and seeing the whole picture. So it's about how your HbA1c is doing as well. Dave says, you're in control of what goes in your mouth. Yeah, absolutely. So what I'm trying to say is that often um, we around food we sometimes aren't honest with ourselves and that doesn't help us in the long term so be honest about what you want and what you will and won't do because then you can create a plan around it so don't please 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 for christmas do not do best case scenario um, because that's likely to leave you feeling like you failed and that is not helpful and not true uh, so 
be realistic about what you're prepared to do. Um, and then it's much easier to create a plan around it. Um, Dolores says, still follow low carb, high fat, but try the hydroxy cut diet pill because brother had had great success with it. I take one at 9 a.m. and another at 3 p.m. and I've drastically lost my carb cravings. What do you think is going on? Is it all in my mind? Dolores, as long as um, I need to research hydroxy carb, um, as long as <clears throat> there are no side effects and it's not a scam and ridiculously expensive, who cares if it's placebo or not? Uh, you know, the power of our mind is incredibly powerful. So if the pill is taking away your carb cravings and there is no downsides to it, it's not something weird that you don't know what's in it, um, then it's working, then that's all that matters, um, if that makes sense. So placebo is incredibly strong. Uh, and so if it's working, it doesn't really matter why, as long as there's no damage associated with it. Okay, because sometimes these things can have downsides. So as long as there's no downside, there's no weight chemicals in there that are causing you problems, then that is totally fine. Um, so that would be what I would say to you about Christmas. Um, I would say to you, rather than having goals around weight gain or blood sugars and things about that, those are important. I would say your main goal is to be honest about what you're going to eat and have a guilt-free Christmas, whatever that looks like for you. Uh, you know, and you know, make sure that you're eating to please yourself, not eating to please others. You'd be amazed at how often we do that. Uh, so this is about, um, and it's going to be tricky. Uh, I'm not going to say it's going to be easy, but it is about being honest with yourself about what you're going to do. So there's no point going to a party and saying, I'm going to stay on track and I'm going to be good. And then there's a container of crisp when you come in the door, you eat one crisp and you know what happens then, or chips wherever you are in the world. Um, so own the fact that you're going to eat those and then how are you going to um, allow for it? So what a lot of people do that are healthy weight is they pay it forward. So they know they're going to go out on Friday night and they might have a little bit more than they expect to have. And they will make allowances for that ahead of time. So they've already put it in the bank because it's much harder to do that afterwards. It's much harder to do, actually, I was going to be good and then I was bad. And I'm using good and bad because those are the terms that you will use. Um, and I've ruined it now. So, um, so, uh, so, you know, decide honestly what you're prepared to do and what you're not prepared to do. And then it's really easy to deal with then you can make some plans about it and then you can really enjoy Christmas without feeling guilty and worried because neither of those emotions are going to help you. So this is about having nice time. The other thing I would say to you is that Christmas is one day, the 25th of December. It isn't a month. It doesn't start on the 1st of December and finish on the 1st of January. And one of my favorite sayings as I sign off um, and Dave says, so Dave just commented, and Dave, if you want to find him on Facebook, he's um, a good chef, and uh, he's, uh, see, brownie points to me, and he's got lots of nice recipes, actually, how he lives his low-carb life. Um, he says, I'm having lots of chicken drumsticks and belly pork, sounds good to me. So one of the things that always resonated with me is that actually you don't have to worry too much about what you eat between Christmas and New Year. You need to worry about what you eat between New Year and Christmas. Okay, so on that note, I shall sign off. I shall be back here again next Tuesday. Uh, and, we, and if you've got any topics specifically you would like me to cover, then email me, mary at freefromtype2.com. If you're watching me on YouTube, leave a comment below. Give me a nice thumbs up if you think I've earned it and hit the subscribe button you guys know the drill um okay everyone have a fantastic week i shall see you next tuesday ta-ta for now